Now I'd like to talk about one of the most important ideas in statistics. And that's the idea of a confidence interval. And specifically, I'm going to talk about the confidence interval for population proportions. And to do this, I'd like to have a, an example that we're discussing along the way to help, uh, help clear up any, any misunderstandings or confusion. An example really goes a long way to help clear that, those kind of problems up. So here's to the problem I'd like you to consider. Um, considering the population of maybe being all the people in Licking County or maybe just all the people in Newark or, you know, just whatever the population is, I'd like to know what, what percent of all adults plan to go see a movie at a theater sometime in the, the next 10 days. Okay? Well, how can I go about finding that? Well, I would decide to maybe get a sample of, just say, 10 adults chosen at random. And here's the question I'd ask them. Do you plan on watching a movie at a theater sometime in the next 10 days? And again, I'm saying that my sample is... 10 adults chosen at random. And again, not only is this a random sample, this would should be a simple random sample. All right. Well, how how good of answer will this the sample of 10 adults be? Can I expect that that the the the, the proportion of of these 10 adults that plan to go see a movie in the next 10 days is going to be anywhere close to the actual number, or at least not number, but the portion of adults, of adults in the area that are going to go see a movie? Well, let's, let's answer that question by taking a look at what the distribution of, of samples of size 10 would look like. Okay, so here, here we have all the values 0 to 10 and X my random variable X is going to count how many people out of 10 say yes they are going to go see a movie so let's say uh, I took a sample and that answer turned out to be 5 so I could make a little mark here that sample said said 5 are going there okay and let's say I went and collected another sample of 10 adults and let's say 7 out of those said they were going to go see a movie in the next 10 days. Now, before we go any further, let's stop and let's say that somehow we have a magic crystal ball or we, we are psychic and we, we know the answer to this. We, we are demigods sitting up above looking down and we happen to know that the actual number, uh, not number, but proportion of people that are going to go see a movie in the next 10 days, let's say we know that is 60%. Okay? So if that actually is 60%, then we can expect that if I if I go out and collect another sample, and this is me not you know not knowing the real answer is actually 60%. If I collect, I go out and get another sample. Let's say this time four say uh, they're going to go see a movie. Next time, let's say six say it. Okay, and if I continue getting samples and placing in here, these are the different results from each of the sample. Each of these x's represents a sample's result. Okay, and let's say another one says, okay, 9, and we say it's here, and another one says 7. Let's just keep going on, collecting more and more samples, and um, more and more, get more and more, and because I, I, I know, as, as uh, sitting up ahead, that the proper answer is 60%, then uh, I can expect to probably get more of those than anything else. So let's say, let's say another one is only, only 3 out of 10 say they're going to go see a movie. Okay, and we get one of these and these. And uh, let's see, this keeps going up here like this. And I'm just collecting more and more samples. Oh, finally we got here. We had a sample in which 10 out of all 10 adults said they were going to go see a movie. We expect that to happen very often. No, not, not very often. So here we go. We got some more. And how about uh, over here? Yeah, we had... One sample only said two of them were going to go see a movie. Okay, we got one here, and we got one here, and here, and let's say one out here, and uh, there, 
and there, and there. Let's say, uh, say that's it. Okay. I don't know how many that is. That's going to be 30, 30 some samples if we counted them. Doesn't matter. Um, that's pretty much what the distribution of the sample results would look like. Right there. And you're looking at that and you're saying, hey, that looks like a normal distribution. Well, no, it's not a normal distribution. This is a binomial probability distribution. These are discrete values. These are continuous values. Either nobody or one or two or three people are going to go see movies. You can't have 5.6 people going to see a movie. These numbers have to be whole numbers and nothing in between. Discrete values. And there were exactly two possibilities. You're either going to go see a movie or you're not going to go see a movie. This is a binomial distribution. Not normal. However, you should recall, though, that a binomial distribution does sort of take on the shape of a normal distribution. Notice it's not centered. It's a little bit skewed. We get the, the biggest value of 6, not 5, in the middle. And that's because we're saying that we happen to know that the actual answer for the whole population is 60%. So this is what my distribution would look like. Now, <clears throat> As well as looking at x values here from 0 to 10, couldn't we also say down here that this represents 0% of all the all, of all 10 of them, and this, this 10 would represent 100% of all of them. Of course, 5 out of 10 would be 50%, and a 7 out of 10 would be 70%. I could, I could fill all of these in with percents. So I'm saying I really don't have to specifically talk about 0 to 10, I can also express it in terms of percents down along here. And in the same way, I don't have to let these x's represent countings. I can change this frequency into an actual relative frequency, which is a probability. And my shape is going to be exactly the same. In other words, if I'm saying this line here is not counting 1 or 2, but counting, you know, the probability of it occurring is being 1%, then maybe this may go all the way up to maybe 25%. Is that readable, 25%? Okay. So what I'm saying is, if th this can apply to in any sample size, instead of having a sample of 10, I could just easily have a sample of 100 people. And I could still, instead of writing my numbers from 0 to 100, still just have my 0 to 100% down on the bottom here. And my probabilities wouldn't change at all from 0% uh, to 1% probability clip to 25%. And my tallest one would necessarily be whatever 60% is. If it's from 0 to 100, then this would be 60. 60% 60 is 60 out of 100. This shape would not change at all, no matter how big my uh, sample size is. Now, <clears throat> a statistician isn't going to go out and collect all these samples. I just did this because I wanted to show you what the distribution of the samples looks like. And would you agree that most of the samples tend to accumulate around what is most likely to happen? Would you agree, well, if I over here at zero, we didn't get any zeros out of 10. And the probability that, that 10 out of 10 people said they're going to go see a movie, this should be really, really rare. In fact, I bet it's lower than 1% chance. Most of these values occur right around here. So I always have students say, okay, so you're going to go out and get a sample. What, what's the, what's, what's, what, what makes you think that that sample is going to be anywhere close to what the, the proper answer would be for the whole population? Well, look. Look at this. What's most likely? If I go out and randomly pick a sample, in other words, randomly pick one of these, which ones of these are likely to come up with? One of these down here that has a very low probability or something up here that has a much higher probability? It's going to be something right between, between 4 and 8 anyway, between 40% and 80%. So, in my next video, part two, we'll talk about a specific sample size and uh, see what we can say about this sample.